October arrives in college football with a strong slate of games. This is separation Saturday in the SEC. Hard questions asked and answered. As the Gamecocks here in Columbia hope to win their first ever top 10 showdown and beat the Georgia Bulldogs for a third straight year. A border feud renewed. Meanwhile, in the swamp, it's seek and destroy. Quarterbacks in the crosshairs. Which one can evade and execute before the defenders devour them? Gators chomping for payback against LSU. In Austin, Bevo meet Gino. The cerebral center of West Virginia's offense takes us to study hall to learn the secrets behind the six stats. And Ohio Stadium will vibrate today if Urban's Bucks and Bose Huskers feed off the fire and intensity of these native sons. Racing pulses, sweat, spit, tears, purely business. Don't believe it. College game day visits the Game Cox House in Columbia, South Carolina, as the schedule awakens in October. ESPN College Game Day. for many of these students has turned into a Saturday morning pep rally kickoff nine hours away this anticipated collision of old SEC East rivals number five Georgia number six South Carolina on a big showdown Saturday in the SEC we thank you for joining us here in Columbia Chris Fowler Desmond Howard Lee Corso and Kirk Kerbstreet we were here in this very spot this beautiful old horseshoe the historic heart of the campus two years ago uh -huh. That was a milestone oh, yeah. day for South Carolina. Beat yeah. number one Alabama. Right. 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 We're hoping right. for another similar kind of milestone here tonight. That scene, the upset from yeah. two years yes, ago. Sir. I'm feeling not just potentially here, but uh, upset across the whole country. Mm -hmm. I think this might be one of those Saturdays where crazy things might be happening. Kirk, can you believe it? For the first time ever, I'm picking seven upsets. Yes, seven, seven. seven. Yes, That's a season yes. That's it. <laughs> Please stay around and watch the show with them, will you? I, I will definitely do that. I heard it's <laughs> worth the price of admission. I think I agree with you, Kurt. All the eyes on the SEC, these ranked versus ranked matchups. I think one of the biggest storylines of the day is going to come out of the West. Keep eye on those games on the West Coast. Yeah, some big ones. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Something, something's got to give in that prediction that we're all building to. I don't think Georgia or South Carolina has ever won when you picked them. Is that? I'm, I don't I, think I, so. <laughs> this is definitely, huh? <laughs> you got five ranked versus ranked games today. Four of them are very competitive. 
West Virginia, I mean, uh, Washington, a big underdog to Oregon, but West Virginia and Texas off the highest scoring Big 12 game in yeah. history. Wow. Here's down there in Austin. Well, I think everybody's talking about Geno Smith this week, and we start with our slate with talking about Geno Smith in this offense. West Virginia on the road in Austin, their first true taste of the Big 12. He's going to have a chance to throw this ball around. Stedman Bailey stepped up. Tavon Austin, one of the most explosive players in the country. You have David Ash on the other side. Don't look now, but the Texas offense is starting to really look good. Can the Horns defense slow down Geno Smith, Des? How about the Big Ten? Nebraska at Ohio State. Last week against the Spartans, Braxton Miller, the Buckeyes quarterback, took a pounding. The Black Shirts, they're going to have to make him pay a price every time he carries the ball if they want to win this game. i tell you one thing, though, Coach. That kid right there is very tough. Ooh, yeah, I saw that in person. Washington at Oregon. Oregon's offense overshadows an improved Duck defense. In the last two games, the Ducks have scored three touchdowns on interceptions. In Pac-12 games, they've allowed only one touchdown in 11 tries in the red zone. Oregon usually has score teams, but in the clutch, defense can come through. Is that one of your big upsets? You don't have the courage. To get <laughs> in Gainesville, is grilled Mettenberger on the menu. Yes, unless the LSU quarterback gets better protection, makes quicker decisions. Can playmaker Odell Beckham step up? Will the Tigers wake up today? Florida's defense is healthy, rested, ready to atone for last year's beatdown. Can Gillisley get loose today? Tonight, ESPN primetime right here in Columbia, Georgia. With these young running backs going up against South Carolina and Marcus Lattimore, who's healthy. Cannot wait to see the battle of these backs. Aaron Murray comes in with confidence as a three-year starter. And Jadavian Clowney and the South Carolina defense. Can they be the difference in this football game? If the Gamecocks win, they'll prevail up front. Hey, Georgia fans, if it feels like it's been been a while since you've won a really signature game. Here's why. Look at the record against teams that finished the season ranked since 08, 2 and 14. 0 and 9 the last couple of years, winless in the SEC. Going back to 2008. Mm -hmm. Steve Spurrier has never liked Georgia. That's well established. Here's the HBC with Tom Rinaldi. Coach, Georgia leads the country in explosive plays, more than 20 yards and longer with 43. How do you contain that element of their offense? Well, you try to tackle well, you try to hit your gaps, and uh, don't get blocked, all those kind of things. Uh, Lorenzo Ward, our D coordinator, uh, is one of the best, I think, in the country. We've been pretty good against the run thus far, uh, but we'll certainly find out tomorrow night. Strength against strength, certainly, when you mm -hmm. consider their scoring offense against your scoring defense. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do to pressure Aaron Murray in this game? Well, certainly, you got to stop the run first, whoever mm -hmm. you play, and, and they've been a very good run team. And, and then you got to get pressure on the quarterback, of course, cover the guys. Uh, so our guys are looking forward to the challenge, really are. And, and offensively, we need to stay on the field a bit. Uh, we don't yeah. need to go three and out and say defense, go stop them uh, the whole game. Uh, you know, football is a team sport, and if your offense can stay out there and have some four or five minute drives, stuff like that, it uh, reduces the number of plays the other team gets. Gamecocks trying to go 6 0 for the first time since 1988. Coach, we appreciate it. Okay, Thanks Tom, very much. Thanks. Spurrier keyed up. <laughs> yeah. Is he priceless? <laughs> oh, man. He's hoping for a it. vintage performance, and speaking of vintage, have you oh, seen boy. this? The, oh. the Spurrier Vineyards in Northern California. Producing oh, this man. nice garnet red. Kirk, I know you enjoy the subtle pleasures of a petite Syrah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we're going yeah. to open this, let it breathe in yeah. the bottle. Yeah, yeah, let it sure. breathe. It'll taste later yeah. on. So. Okay. I go for a red wine. Cabernet, petite <laughs> Syrah. You can yeah, have sure. You can, you can have mine because I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to learn today? What, what team is really you're focusing on in these showdown games? The team I want to see if they're for real or not is the Georgia Bulldogs. Jo Georgia comes into this game with as much optimism as I think any year that they have had since Mark Rick's been the head coach. And that includes going back to the Matthew Stafford and A.J. Green era. And it's because of a three-year starting quarterback. You have Aaron Murray. You have these young backs. They're as balanced as anybody. Yeah. But they haven't seen this atmosphere, and they haven't seen this kind of defense. If they win and look good doing it, 
Georgia throws their hat in the ring up there with Alabama to try to compete for not just an SEC, yeah, but a national, national championship. championship. I want to see LSU. You know, LSU, they came into the season thinking we have Zach Nettenberger now, a quarterback who can throw the ball. Last year, Jordan Jefferson, he was mobile, but they couldn't get their passing game going. They always had a strong running game. They felt as though Mettenberger would open up the offense, and he struggled. He's a sitting duck back there. He hasn't been protected well, and when he's touched, he fumbles the ball. I mean, even though you're sacked, you can't just fumble the ball like that. So I yeah. want to see how this offense goes up against Florida's defense. If they're for real or not, this is a big step for the LSU Tigers and, offense. And I'll tell you what, Kirk, I want to see Florida. Is Florida tough enough to challenge physically right. the West? LSU plays big ball, big boy football. Yeah, no they better be ready. You better bring yes, your sir. big boy pads. Exactly. Big boy pads. <laughs> <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, you got West Virginia and Texas, two defenses that are really searching at this point of the season. Mountaineers win, giving up 63 in regulation. Nobody's ever done that in college football before. They beat Baylor, but what do you need to see going to decide that game in Austin? Well, I tell you one thing. I picked Texas to go to BCS before the season. Mm -hmm. And I'm sticking with that. They're a very, very good football team. Yeah. I think they're going to win today. Wow. Texas is a good football team, Desmond. They're a good football team. You look at West Virginia's defense, they're, they're awful. I think the key for me, just right out the gate, time of possession. You must try to double the time of possession of, of West Virginia. I think that that's going to be the key for Texas. They're going to have to keep the ball twice as long as West Virginia if they're going to have a chance to win that's this right. game. What is it, 10 04? You already made a pick? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, no, that was kind of quick, you, wasn't it? I thought you were picking upset. <laughs> oh, no, that's not. That's one of the games. That, that was a quick yeah. one right there. <laughs> slid that in there. I, I just want to see Texas's defense. All, all this talk about Texas and Manny Diaz from a year ago, they're, average, they're allowing for almost 15 yards per completion. And here comes Geno Smith. He hadn't even got oh. to the stadium, and they're already allowing 15 yards. <laughs> yeah. I think Texas's defense will play better yeah. than people will think, and I think they're going to be motivated to face that Geno Smith. Yes, offense. sir. Let me tell you about the number three versus number one showdown in the FCS in the Fargo big Dome. Game. Youngstown State, number three. Yes, number okay. one, North Dakota State, the defending champions. Both of had strong rebuilding jobs off right. three win seasons in recent years. So I, give me the about quarterbacks on the road, baby. I'll give you an A segment. Brock there. Jensen, no, no, quarterback. North Dakota State, where they're tough. They're hard to Fargo <laughs> Penguins. Yes, sir. Right here. You going, you going Penguins? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. You have a pick on, on the Bison against Youngstown State? I got Youngstown State. I'm from Ohio. Oh, that's oh, right. Ohio guy. I that's got Youngstown right. State, buddy. Tough guys. I'm yes, sir. Youngstown. Real tough guys. Oh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Predictions flying early here on College Game. A lot more coming up from Columbia here. We talked about Geno Smith, the silly numbers, 20 touchdowns, no picks so far. Todd McShay went into the film room to find out how he's protecting the ball better. See how Manti Teo has relied on his faith to overcome a series of tragedies off the field and his talent to overcome the challenges he's faced on it. And Jarvis Jones creating havoc on the field, but Tom Rinaldi explains why doctors thought his playing days were done not too long ago. College Game Day is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And in part by Cooper Tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And the new film, Flight. In theaters Friday, November 2nd. Rated R. Another low-calorie lunch in the oh, SEC. Yeah. Holly's pork. No Look at it. Oh, no, she's no, not. No, she's no, not going to do that. She can't put that thing in her mouth. Oh, wow. She put that wow. thing in her mouth. Uh, that is huge. Around <laughs> David Pollock cooking up some chocolate walnut pie. You know what? That's as close as he's going to get yeah. to actually yeah. tasting it. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the you want to impress me, David. Let me see you bite yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask David about the, the pie there. <laughs> Hashtag Ask Game Day on Twitter. He'll ask you some of your questions. And you can go on to ESPN.com, search Chevrolet to play virtual Saturday selections. And stay tuned, of course, for picks coming up later in the show. Mr. Corso promising lots of upsets. How about the Cats? Take it on Penn State. The Cats have lost five in a row to Penn State, six of seven in Beaver Stadium. 
But Pat Fitz and crew rank for the first time since 2008. That game follows us at noon Eastern time. They can get to 6-0 and for the first time in 50 years. But this is now October. This is the Cats' nightmare month. And Fitzgerald's put a lot of time and energy into diagnosing and curing his season's annual midseason malaise. The, the offense is fun to watch thanks to Kane Coulter's versatility. The quarterback ran for four touchdowns and then slashed out to wide receiver to catch nine passes, six of them for first downs from new starting quarterback Trevor Simeon. They were converting third downs, a school record 704 yards against the Hoosiers, and Pat Fitz is fired up these days. Double teams got beat! Double teams got beat! Hey, just like they said in Dumb and Dumber, let's go out and totally redeem ourselves! I want to hear you yelling the whole way down. All right? All right? Why not? What the hell? Yeah. Let's go out and totally redeem ourselves! Ah! Go get their ass! We're not going to try to put a square peg into a round hole, but we're going to try to put a lot of pressure on the defense. We have to look very multiple to them. All these dual threat quarterbacks that are having a lot of success, and it's hard for defenses to contain them. Hey, give me that agile bag. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're getting your lips knocked off. How much you weigh? 260? You weigh like 164 pounds. All right, they're going to implode their hands in your ribs. I'm not the tallest guy, so you got a lot of people around you, a lot of things you have to read. He's a baller. If you go to the YMCA 20 years from now, you better pick him first. Coach, I'm going to throw it to him. Two throws, my shoulder will be sore. Oh, look at that stunt. Holy cow. Cats, the only Big Ten unbeaten that's eligible to play for the title. This is uh, some of the fun. Kane Coulter. You know, he does a little bit of everything. He runs, he catches, he throws, but they gotta prove that that October malaise is a thing of the past. They're 10 and 15 mm. this month under Fitzgerald. Are they for real, Des? Because yeah. the FBS teams that they've beaten are 1 and 11 against everybody else. So it's not a real strong list of victims so far. Can they get it done in Happy Valley? I think they can. I like Coach Fitzgerald. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in all of college football. I like this team. I spoke to him earlier this week, and Coach Fitzgerald said that they haven't played their best football. And they know they're up against a stiff challenge against uh, uh, the Nittany Lions because Penn State has outscored their opponents 49-0 to zero in the first quarter. So they must start fast, weather that emotional storm, and then defensively try to create turnovers and keep everything in front of them. So I like I like the Wildcats in this game. I think they will beat Penn State. Northwestern is a good football team. They can beat Penn State, but they stop the Penn State run, and they can do that. They're first in the Big Ten in rushing defense, and their specialists are very good. So they win the old-fashioned way, stopping the run and returning and kicking the ball. Penn, what's Northwestern? First upset. All this talk last week about what's wrong with the Big Ten. Here's two head coaches that are going to, I think, do, they're going to do it the right way as far as recruiting and trying to take their programs to the next level. Bill O'Brien's done a remarkable job. Matt McGloin leads the Big Ten in passing. They're back home. They're playing with a lot of confidence. I just think that Kane Colder, whether it's running or it's receiving or it's Wildcat making plays from the option, and also, you know, Simeon's done a good job of stepping in. Ben Mark's a great player. I mean, yeah. Northwestern has some athletes. Team, I'm right. with you guys. I, I'm nervous here because Chris loves the triple not so fast, yes. my friend, but I'm going to go with Northwestern on the road to he make it 6-0. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. he, he did try that he did. last he did. week. He did try that. I, did. I think so. I, I think know. he, he did. Of that. He, he did last. try that. He did he that last week. That's right. That was Texas-Oklahoma State. Oh, he, he did, got yeah. Yeah. Do it again. No, I don't think I'm going to go back to that. I'm still waiting for an apology from the Big 12 about that. It almost came through. Penn State. Playing with a lot of emotion. They are. It's homecoming. There you yes. go. The there. students have called for a whiteout. There you go. Bill O'Brien's team, after two gutting losses to open the season, could head to the bye week with four consecutive wins if they can get it done against the Purple Cats. And McGloin's had two good games in his career against Northwestern. No trip. Meanwhile, no trip. tonight in primetime on ABC, in the old horseshoe in the banks of the old Intenji, Nebraska, off that rousing comeback last week, visits Ohio State. It's a second straight week for Ohio State to potentially avenge a loss and keep alive an eight-year run without losing consecutive games to a same conference op opponent. That's really tough. The Buckeyes folded in Lincoln last year when Braxton Miller got knocked out. He was dinged last week, but he says his knee is 100%. It had better be. Jordan Hall's knee is not good, and he's going to be out of this game. Taylor Martinez leads the most explosive offense in the Big Ten. Two more touchdown passes. He's going to equal his total all of last year. He's also had a couple of 100-yard rushing games. Nebraska has 15 fumbles, though. Nine of them lost in the last four games. Ball security is essential. 
Bo Pelini is seeking his first ever really big road win as a head coach at Nebraska, and he goes back to his native state. He's a Youngstown native, and look at the serious look on Pelini's face when he was a captain at Ohio State, a I, safety. I, I played against Bo. Sure did. I, yeah, I played, I played, I played, I played Bo. with yeah. Bo. He so, says, yeah. Yeah. no Youngstown big Cardinal deal, yep. no. nothing personal, <laughs> no extra emotion, taking his team back into the horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Want to give me a cough there? <laughs> Urban Meyer was a grad assistant at Ohio State when Pelini played there. He's not even trying to pretend that his first conference home game isn't a big deal. Here he is with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Urban Meyer, you are preparing for Taylor Martinez, a kid who's dynamic and who helped win this game against Ohio State last year when you weren't here. How do you prepare defensively for a guy like him that's such a multiple threat? What's well, much different than a much different offense that we saw last week against Michigan State. Michigan State let our defensive line kind of control the game. This won't happen Saturday. He's a very, they got a very strong perimeter run game. So our backers and safeties have to tackle. Well, we had an issue against Cal tackling. We worked extremely hard on it, but make, make no mistake about it. This is going to come down to tackling those, you know, they have two really good backs and that quarterback's dynamic. We have to tackle very well. Now you've got a dynamic player just like that, Braxton Miller. You know how hard that is to game plan against. Where can you take advantage of Braxton? Oh, we're going to ride that horse. You know, uh, uh, we have to distribute the, the ball a little bit, but Braxton Miller is who we are right now, and uh, we got to protect him. We got to block for him. Uh, but he is, a, he, I think he's as dynamic runner as is in college football right now, and he can also throw the ball very well. So we're going to, when you got a talented guy like that, use him, and we're going to use him. And folks want to know how healthy is Braxton going into this game. Oh, he's great. He's 100%. He probably had his best Thursday practice he's ever had. His attitude's great. And, you know, there's a, uh, an opportunity for the Ohio State Buckeyes to go 6-0. and So Braxton's ready to roar. Thank you, Coach. Chris, back to you. Holly, thank you. If he's not 100%, Miller better fake it. Yeah. Because they need him. <laughs> a great tradition at Ohio State. So I hate to mention it, but the trophy case behind Urban, there was, there was some space on the shelf. It, it, it wasn't... Filled to the brim. I, you, did didn't you, notice notice that? you didn't notice the crystal I noticed ball, the crystal ball. National oh. championship. No, I, I, I saw <laughs> the crystal ball. Uh, it, was, it was right here. I saw some <laughs> space. I saw some space on the other side. Uh, yes. Well, that's why he's here to, to add a few more in the back. Yeah. I, 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 a couple years from now, we'll be going to him. There'll be a couple more crystal yeah. balls. <laughs> Everybody so. seems to think so. This Can Nebraska a play a complete thing. game? Can the, can the offense and the defense come together for 60 minutes? Is that, it's going to take that, I think, on the road. Yeah, but I think Bo Pelini coming back into Columbus, I think he's going to have his team at a, at a level of emotion where they're going to play much better than I think they played all year. I think Ohio State will. Ohio State, their four home games, it's been at noon against opponents they knew they were better. It's a night game. Th this will be a different scene. For Urban Meyer, with his background in Florida, this will be like an SEC type of scene. And I think the defense from Ohio State, they're going to be keyed in to Taylor Martinez and Rex Burke had some great playmakers from Nebraska. Yeah. I think it's going to come down to Martinez's ability to make plays in the pass game. Yeah. If he can throw the ball, right. Nebraska can win this game. If he turns it over, obviously, it's going to go in the other direction. No, I agree with you. I think that Martinez has become a better passer because Rex Burkhead is back now. Mm -hmm. Came back off the MCL knee injury that he sustained earlier in the season. And when Rex Burkhead is added to that running game, you got Rex Burkhead, Taylor Martinez. Now the passing game opens up. Not a deep passing game, but just enough to keep Keep defenses honest. I, what I was really surprised about last week was Ohio State's tackling defensively. Like they, Michigan State just ran through them at times. That really concerned me. So I think that Nebraska will win this game because of Burkhead and Martinez. But I want to watch Ohio State night game. Like you said, maybe they're going to be, be more fine. amped up yep, and they yeah. start hitting. But I was really surprised at the, the tackling. Yeah, more on bad tackling in a, in a second later on yeah, in the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot on that. <laughs> I saw Ohio State Michigan State game from the sideline, mm -hmm. and man, that was a physical game. Yeah. I think the Buckeyes are bruised up. They play another physical team in Nebraska. Nebraska is number one in the, in the Big Ten in rushing and number one in sacks and tackles of the last. Ooh. But here's a special note for you guys. It's the first time in 56 years Nebraska's played a game in Ohio State. Yeah. You know that? Wow. That so that's matter. good enough for an upset. Nebraska. That's the reason. They haven't yes. been there 56 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. <laughs> <That's laughs> right. I, I think Ohio State wins, and I think it's because of Braxton Miller. And I again, like Taylor Martinez, who can throw the ball, which quarterback protects the ball, Devin. Evan Smith, the vertical passing yeah. game. Ohio State will make some big plays in the pass game with Miller still developing as a quarterback, and that'll be the difference in the game. Not so fast, my friend. Big Ten style.
Buckeyes, are, they've got to be bruised, boy. Yeah. 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 I tell you, that game was boom, boom, boom. It was. They're ready. No That's life for the Big Ten. The, the teams that these two squeezed past last week, Wisconsin and Michigan State face must-win games, but their favorites, Badgers against Illinois, Michigan State, Indiana. Huge day in Purdue. They're calling yes. this one of the biggest yeah. home games in a long time yeah. as they take on the rested Wolverines who come off a bye. Oh. Boilermakers, they see a real chance to win the division and get within a step of the Rose Bowl. I, I, I think Purdue's going to win the division. I think they're going to go on to win the Big Ten championship. And I think a big part of that is beating Michigan. I think at home they have an ability to throw the football, distribute the ball. This is a veteran Purdue team. I think their defense will be keyed in to stop Denard Robinson. I think the emotions. This Purdue fan base knows how special this team could be. I like Purdue to win this game. I like Purdue also, but remember one thing. As a former IU coach, I hate to say it. <laughs> they're going to win the game. But you know why? Boy, they're because right. they're playing at home and the grass is going to be that that's, high. That's part of the game plan. That's right. Right. That's Mich all part of Michigan it. Michigan doesn't have a chance with his feet. Purdue, extra grass, wins the game. <laughs> Those two are tripping. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him I say, I wrote that down October the 6th. Boiler up. Herb Boiler up. got Purdue winning the Big Ten oh, in Pasadena. I don't know. I, bound. I, we'll see. <laughs> is that where is that? You, you we'll have some. <laughs> Michigan coming off the bye week, you know, they correct Dernard's problems that he had against Notre Dame, get back to the basics, run the ball, let Purdue a little bit. I got Michigan winning a close one, a very close one. Mm -hmm. It's not like Michigan's lighting it up. No, not at all. But no. they had come off a bye week, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Watch, Have you ever picked it. against Michigan? I just, yeah. 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 <laughs> Rich Rod days. Did you? Oh! Okay. Yeah, Rich Rod one days. One brief regime, yeah. that one yeah. window of time. Yeah, yeah. those three tough three years. years. Three years. <laughs> exactly. There's some, there's some, you seemed seemed like an eternity at the time. <laughs> I coach against those guys. Yeah. And the faster you are, the higher the grass gets. That's okay. I'll tell you okay. what. So it was, it was short now. for your team. They, got short. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> they didn't fear the Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll swing it back out of the Big Ten into the SEC That's where right. the Gators yeah. quarterback Jeff Driscoll faces his biggest test yet. Won a couple of big road games, but here come the Bayou Bengals who promise they will awaken this afternoon. And can suddenly make a tackle these days? Please, we'll examine why form tackling has become a lost art in college football. Put out the APB, because right now, it's MIA. Defense. Lately, it doesn't win championships. It loses games. Strip instead of tack. Big hit instead of wrap up. Bad scheme, blown coverage, broken scoreboards, busted records. 19 touchdowns in four quarters, 95 points in regulation. Intimidation, domination, try degradation and humiliation. Right now, there's only one word for one side of the ball indefensible. Well, defenses have struggled in the opening month. Look at some of these stats that reflect the high scoring nature of the sport these days. Last weekend was the second highest scoring Saturday in college football since 1937. Baylor, West Virginia, just symbolic of that. But each team in the top 12 scored at least 30 points. Where's the old school defense? Where's the kind of defense we saw 10 years ago when these two teams collided and Pollock, Pollock stole the ball. He stole the football from Corey Jenkins. He stole it. Georgia touchdown. My man was thick back in the day. <laughs> I mean, you talk about. about that, I knew that would get him going, David. The girth, the girth on that guy. <laughs> sloppy, I mean, you were sloppy D line by I mean, here. Wow. You look like you've been swimming with Michael Phelps, son. <laughs> I know anybody who played defense back in the day feels like what we're seeing in college football now represents a complete collapse in the fundamentals of tackling. A lot of coaches agree. I've seen more poor tackling this year, I think, across the country than ever before. I'm concerned with it, obviously. I think the first game we missed 23 tackles, and, and uh, you know, this past game we missed somewhere in the neighborhood of that as well. The game is played in space now differently, and you're putting skilled players in space one-on-one, -on -one, and it's a difficult skill to develop. Blocking and tackling is still fundamentally the biggest part of football. 
I know we all are worried about injuries to our players, and maybe that's a, an area we need to work on as coaches. Maybe that's something that we don't work on as much. Uh, some of the, the practices aren't as physical maybe as they need to be. I know in our league you better be physical or you won't win. Everywhere I've always been, we've never really tackled each other. This, this is probably one of the places where our guys enjoy tackling quite a bit. And when we're in an inside drill, these guys are tackling all the time. Evidently not enough. <laughs> I didn't see any tackles. A lot of people week. shaking their heads these days. And we got to bring in a guy right now from the Bristol campus who loves to hole up in the tape room and look at hours of tape to get a unique spin on things. And Trevor Maddich, you've looked at a lot of bad tackling in the last week or so in Bristol. What jumps out at you? What's going wrong? And what can we do to fix it? Chris, it's amazing how often a tackler will sabotage himself by not using proper technique as he approaches a ball carrier. It's that fundamental that matters. And let's take a look at how it should work. This safety will do one of the hardest things possible, an open field tackle. He flies up, but comes under control. He can adjust laterally. His feet are shoulder width. He has leverage to one side of the ball carrier, so he only has one good go. Now, after this point, it becomes chaotic, and so it's not a perfect, pretty form tackle ending because the ball carrier starts to make moves, but the fundamental approach gives him a chance. It's when the fundamental approach is flawed that you take away your chance. This safety never comes under control. He cannot adjust laterally. Now, the ball carrier did not force him to fly up like a missile. He did it to himself. This safety has a different problem with fundamentals. He comes up under control, but still gets trucked because his feet are way too wide. He cannot adjust laterally. He has no power forward. Now, the ball carrier did not force him to get his feet too wide on that. He did it to himself before he ever was engaged with the running back. Now, you can groove muscle memory in practice to have this kind of good fundamental without getting pounded in practice if you will just commit to it. And truthfully, in this age of the spread offense, if I were a defender, I'd get extra work on my own making that a habit because that habit does not exist right now in too many places. Professor Maddich, thank you for your work and your hard study. Trevor always has a, a great spin. Thanks a lot, big guy. A lot of coaches would say, well, there's all kinds of reasons why we can't practice proper fundamentals. You don't want to get guys hurt. You don't have the time. And the spread offenses are making it a very tough on defense. Well, before we hand it over to the guru who knows about tackling, I, I talked to a lot of defensive coordinators this week about this topic. And the one thing that I'm finding is because now more and more offenses are spreading defenses out, they're challenging them to be able to make plays in space. I think, I think defensive coordinators are doing too much when it comes to stopping these spread attacks like West Virginia. I think guys are thinking too much. They're seeing all these formations. They're seeing formations, they're seeing personnel groupings, and they're seeing motions, and they're having to respond to that. And, it, and all of a sudden, it's 85 snaps. It's happening so fast. You're looking over the sideline. You're trying to figure out, are we substitute in or out? So I think they're thinking so much that they don't have time to be good tacklers. They, they're overthinking this. They need to streamline things and play faster and more aggressively. Practice doesn't make perfect. It makes permanent. you got to practice tackling. So many, Back in the day, back in your day, I know you're going to make reference yeah. to you a little bit. Y'all yeah. used to do two-a-days every day, line full pads. Talented. When I first got to Georgia, we did that. As we went along, two-a-days, one-a-day, two-a-days, one-a-day. Only one day of full pads. You don't hit enough in practice. There is more spread, but there's less DBs who are willing to stick their face in there and make plays, and that's why you see it week in and week out be extremely sloppy. But they're having busts. They're middle errors. There's, there's just, I mean, it's one thing to be there to make a tackle like Trevor shows. It's another thing to just let an inside receiver go on a wheel route, and you're you're focused on this because you're thinking. You're another thing thinking that's it. changed, too, is the targeting rule now, right. it's going to make it worse because now you're telling me I can't hit here, so i got to focus more in a in a surface area down here. Now I have to think as opposed yeah. to coming in and trying to whack them. Collar, you can't. I mean, there's coaches a lot of saying, disadvantages to that, too. And coaches are saying things are tilted to the offense, which means defenses can't get stops, and so now you got to try to strip the ball away. Right. Forget trying to make a tackle. you got to get a turnover because right. right. you can't stop them anyway. Yeah. We'll see. I, I want you to demonstrate the old school. Guess this uh, special <laughs> guest with the this? Carolina jersey on. <laughs> Show me some old school SEC tackling. All right, well, well Trevor showed it, though. you you, you got to be able to come in under control and come in. And then when you come in, you don't see. You can't go high anymore. But when you come in, you got to be able to come here and snap. Oh, oh, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? 
And then you and then you DDT. Then, then, you, then you finish him off. Then you go get your buddy jump in there. And... <laughs> You're a good sport. Thanks, man. Yeah, Appreciate thank you very it. much. Good yeah. sport. Where, where the but there's got to be more people willing to stick their face in there too. I mean, you see it. More people are just too pretty in their uniforms. They don't really yeah. want to get dirty. Next time you put like these quarterbacks, I think you can get Chris. Up no, no. I, you got a chance. You're gonna get it to him before he gets down. No. You better have the same insurance policy you had. You're gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. One guy who can tackle. This Notre Dame's linebacker, Manti Teo. When we come back on College Game Day from Columbia, I'll tell you how Teo has handled every challenge on the field, but also challenges off the field. Us, why me? Why them? Why all of them one day? And this is six hours ago. I just found out Grandma passed away, and you take, you know, the love of my life. College Game Day, live from Columbia, South Carolina, is brought to you in high definition by Vizio. Back here in Columbia, live look from our Cheese It Real fan camps. We appreciate the dedication of these students to camp out overnight. Get the spots up near the stage. It's a weird situation in Colorado Springs. There's a 9.30 a.m. mountain kick for a very important game in the Commander-in-Chief's race, Navy at Air Force. They had the lot open all night for tailgating at the Academy. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Maybe a little different than SEC-style tailgating, but one in four Navy yeah. against the Stealth Bomber and two and two yeah. Air Force. Can the Falcons retain the trophy? No chance he's no. going against this. I'm going against my Stealth Bomber. Going against? Yes, of course. I coached the Navy. You're going with the row? Yes, sir. Go <laughs> Navy, beat Air Force. I'm going with the stealth. I like Air Force, knock off Navy. Of I like Navy. Navy's deep. You're going Navy? Playing better. Yeah, I like okay. Navy. I like Navy. Good. I'm yeah, alone on Air Force. Okay. okay. Air Force more than a touchdown home favorite. I'll take Air Force. We'll balance to, it out. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's yeah, got to go with Air Force. That's, that's a very tough call for me because my brother was in the Air Force too. So that's a tough. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was in the Marines, but it's only business. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. Mutual respect in that rivalry. We segue to Miami and Notre Dame. Not quite the same history of that mutual respect. In 85, Miami handed the Irish their worst loss Vinny. since World War II. Jimmy ran it up. They blocked a punt. It was 51-7. to They charged the punter and scored a late touchdown. Brent and Era were in the booth. This, that was a painful night. This is the heyday of the Canes. Oh, boy. It led to things like this. Yep. Catholics versus convicts was born in 88. They rumbled. Steve Walsh. Cleveland Gary, controversial fumble call. Two-point conversion after the touchdown. Jimmy for the win. This is pre-overtime. Remember? Walsh pass. Batted away by oh, Pat Carroll. Hey, the Irish. Hey. Out. Uh, in 89, Aaron's in the Orange Bowl, 23-game winning streak for the Irish snap by the fourth and a mile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are oh, great man. games. 27-10. Exactly. Dennis off to Monty Trainers that night. But in 1990, they Take kicked the rocket. Carlos Huerta you know, trying to chase that down. down. <laughs> you tear a ham no, who trying to catch it? the rocket. <laughs> Todd Light <laughs> made the late pickoff. That Notre Dame team was really, really good. Those were good days. Oh, yeah. From the old days to a new look, this is a Shamrock Series game for the Fighting Irish against Miami tonight in Soldier Field. We showed you the helmet last week. This is a controversial new uniform. The Notre Dame old-timers do not appreciate tweaking like the uniform. Yeah. I kind of like it. Now we talked with Brian the, Kelly last week about it. The helmet being off-center like that. I don't understand off -center. that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way it's, the, the kids like The kids like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. More importantly, the Irish fans are hoping for a new look from the offense. It has been a struggle. Only 12 runs of 10-plus yards so far. But tonight should be different. If Notre Dame cannot rip off big chunks, if Everett Golson cannot complete some passes downfield, then sound the alarms. Notre Dame fans because the Canes defense is awful. They've given up 30 plus in every game against the FBS. Denzel Perriman, the linebacker, is back. That should help. But Notre Dame, the only team that hasn't trailed for a second all season, looking to jump on Miami. The Canes got to prove that that mugging in Manhattan was an aberration and not a signal of softness up front. We know the quarterback, Stephen Morris, has been playing better. He arrives confident off an ACC record 566. Hit 1,000 yards the last two games. Philip Dorsett is a, emerged as a target. And the true freshman, Duke Johnson, has tremendous burst, dangerous in space, used as a pass catcher. The Irish are going to be aware of him on screen passes, but they got to tackle him. 
So the guy who leads Notre Dame in tackles and interceptions is Manti Teo. He is an enormous presence in the locker room and on the field and around the program. And Gene Wojciechowski paid a visit to Notre Dame's number five this week. Hi, Gino. How's it going, Chris? You know, Manti Teo, the journey has taken has been incredible. If you think about it, he came from Hawaii 4,000 miles away. He had never seen a Midwest winter. And he told me during his early recruitment, he had absolutely no idea where South Bend, Indiana was on a U.S. map. But not only will he leave that program as one of its greatest defensive players, but also as one of its most beloved. Faith is believing in something that you most likely can't see, but you believe to be true. You feel in your heart and in your soul that it's true. You still take that leap. Manti Teo took a leap of faith and surprised friends, recruiting experts, and even himself when he committed to Notre Dame. It wasn't just that the program was struggling, but that Teo, a devout Mormon, had chosen the nation's most famous Catholic university. Four years ago, the answer that I got to come to this school wasn't the answer that I was expecting, and it wasn't the answer that I wanted. But luckily for me, I have great parents that taught me the importance of having faith. That faith was tested to its core on September 12th. Tail was awakened by an early morning phone call from his parents. They told him his grandmother, Annette Santiago, had died after an extended illness. And then, just six hours later, one heartbreaking loss was followed by another. An older brother called me, and he was just crying and crying and crying. And that's when I, I kind of knew, but I was still in denial. And I was like, don't, don't tell me you're crying, because it's what I'm thinking. And that's when he just said, she's gone. Teo's girlfriend, Lene Kekua, who was battling leukemia, had died. I just lost everything. And you know, I cried, I yelled. I never felt that way before. And this is six hours ago, I just found out grandma passed away and he would take, you know, the love of my life. Last thing she said to me was, I love you. And that was it. Lene had made Teo promise that if anything happened to her, he wouldn't miss a game. That Saturday night, he was on the field at Michigan State. Very emotional, his grandmother passing away over in Hawaii, and then shortly thereafter, a very good friend. The game came easily for Teo that night. He is stuffed in the backfield by Manti Teo. He recorded 12 tackles, recovered a fumble, and broke up two passes in the win. They were with me. I mean, I couldn't do without them. I couldn't do without the support of my family and my girlfriend's family, and uh, I miss them. I miss them. But I know that I'll see them again one day. The following Friday night, there was a campus pep rally for the Michigan game. They all started waving the number five with their hand, and they had the lays on, and it was an, an incredible scene that forced me to ask Manti to come up and speak. Four years ago, I made a decision to come here, and uh, I didn't really know why. At times like these, I know why. I love each and every one of you, and I can't thank you enough for No matter how much I try to picture it in my head, what it would look like, I could never have painted that picture of what I saw in their stadium. In the close win against Michigan, Taylor intercepted two passes, and he did it on the same day that Lene was buried. I literally felt them with me. And after every play I made, I said, that's for you. That's for both of you. I was his roommate the night before the game. And, you know, he could barely sleep. And, you know, it was just a rough, rough night for him. And for him to be able to show up the next day and, you know, play inspired and play as hard as he did, 
it was just fitting that he got the game ball, or Lene got the game ball. Hey, we're going strong. I love each and every one of you. We had our highs, we had our lows. But at the end of the day, we stuck together. 80,000 plus people, Michigan and Notre Dame fans, standing with Lays on. Just love. It looked like love. It was love. And when you see that, that's when you know that I know I was sent here. I sent you for a reason. And that's where you get that confirmation that, hey, you made the right choice. On the day that we visited with Manti, he was reading through some of the hundreds and hundreds of condolence cards and personal letters written to him from people all across the country. He told me that he couldn't possibly answer them all, but he wanted people to know how much those letters meant to him. And he said, in a small way, they helped ease his pain. Chris? We thank Manti for sharing his story. Terrific interview, Gino. Those of us that didn't play college football see that kind of, that kind of togetherness of a team rallying yeah. around a guy. It makes you yeah. wish you did. That's a, that's a great feeling. Well, people always ask, what do you, what do you love so much about yeah. college football? There it is. That, that's that, it. He, that's he, it. He came from the Hawaiian Islands to South Bend, Indiana to be a part of the Irish tradition. Yeah. Four years later, he leaves with a legacy. And, and that fan base really showing their appreciation. As far as this game is concerned, Miami's offensive line, is the key. We know about the quarterback. We know about the playmakers. We know how dynamic they are. The problem I see for the Canes is, again, this Notre Dame front seven led by Manti Teo, I think their, their creativity, their experience yeah. against the youth of Miami, right. that's the difference in this football yeah. game, is Notre Dame's more experienced, been there, done that. Irish take care of business today against Miami. You know, I've watched Miami play a lot, and I was watching film trying to break down Stephen Morris, and the more film I watched, the more I was impressed with their offensive line. I think this is probably the most athletic offensive line they've had in a long time. Now watch the, the center and the right guard. Watch, they're gonna double team the nose, and the center comes up to the next level on the linebacker number 32. The fullback takes 54, leaving a nice little crease for Mike James to run the ball. They work very well together in conjunction. Now watch this right here. Against Boston College, Stephen Morris has 3.5 seconds to throw the ball. They form the great ball of Coral Gables right in front of him. He's not worried about being touched by any defenders. I like this group, their enthusiasm, the way they approach the game. When you watch them on film, they all start to communicate with each other, Coach. Normally, it's just the, the center and the quarterback yeah. pointing out, guys. You'll see the guard looking around pointing out guys and they play extremely well together that's going to be the matchup like Kirk said Miami's offensive line against Notre Dame's front seven I got the Canes the Canes, Canes. Canes. yes wow. sir big, that's a big upset because they're 13 point especially in Chicago yeah Ooh, okay the Irish defense is excellent but they've never faced a team like Miami offense it's quick strike yeah. half of Notre Dame uh, half of Miami's scoring plays have uh, scoring drives have gone for 52 yard two excuse me Half of them no names. Half of Miami's scoring plays have gone for two minutes two, or two less. Minutes or less. Yeah, yes, yes. Right. And therefore, watch this. No names. Run night offense basically wins yeah, this ball game. Ball, 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 ball control. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, and the other thing you got to remember, Lee, Sorry. is the, the turnover margin. Remember last year when Notre Dame was struggling? Yeah. Those first two games, they were turning it over. It was exactly. like a minus 10. Yeah. They're plus yeah. nine coming into this game. That's true. And against that youth and inexperienced Miami, I think that also plays in the favor of, of the Irish. I like Notre Dame. Irish, Notre Dame. Win or lose for the Miami Hurricanes, they're still 3-0 in the ACC. Yeah. they got a big game with Florida State coming up. You're yes. going to put the Knowles on upset alert against NC State because the last three times Florida State's been ranked and facing NC State, they've lost. Ooh. There's a long history of saying, be careful against the Wolfpack in this one. And it goes back to when I played. North Carolina State has always given my Florida State problems. My but this game, hey, <laughs> listen, this game's going to be closer to the edges, um, think, boy. Let me just throw homage <laughs> to you for the, the pictures and the stats that you shared with us from your days at Florida State. Yes. Not just on the football field, but hitting that baseball yes, round. Nice little celebration. You brought up NC State. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you this year yeah. because I picked them to win the national championship. So every game, upset alert, fellas. You, you got to be ready. I mean, you got to take yeah. NC State seriously. Right, right, right. right. Like, I'm doing what you do now to Florida okay, State. Yeah. Every week, get them ready. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll be fine today. I, I, I was I more concerned okay. last week right. against South Florida when they were going to exactly. be flat. Yep. This week, they'll be fine. And they were kind of flat to like, they know, were. a sack and a fumble, did what scoop they and score, and they yeah. start to separate sure. from uh, did what they needed to yeah, do. South Florida. I think this is going to be, I like Florida State in this game. I saw North Carolina State against Tennessee, against Miami. 
They don't have anything and for the Seminoles. There's some problems there. They don't have anything for the Seminoles. Yeah, since, since he stays. Since the Knowles won the title in 99, they've been 5-0 and three times. Each time they've lost game six. Ah. He, he knows all the history. By the way, just for the people here, the Clemson Tigers, they're arch rival. And George is arch rival. Georgia Tech are playing. Sammy White comes, comes back. Exactly. Defense struggling. Yep. For Georgia Tech. Yeah. You know, Georgia Tech's lost two in a row. You lose to Middle Tennessee State, you're going to come out in a bad mood. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Clemson <laughs> will outscore Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's going to score, but Sammy Watkins and Todd Boy in the Clemson boys offense against a mediocre Georgia Tech defense. Yeah. Clemson. They yeah, Clemson, too. Clemson yeah. big, too. Two, at least two scores. Yeah. Sammy Watkins back. They're, back they're worried about their speed. own game. They don't even care exactly. if they pick Clemson <laughs> to win. Well, Clemson, yeah. Geno Smith, the monster stats we saw against Baylor. Now they go to Texas. Can he possibly approach them? He's not facing the Bears. It's the Horns. Film session with him and Todd McShay coming up. Going into Texas, it's not my first rodeo. And that's kind of funny, but, you know, it's true. It's not my first go-around. I've been to LSU and Death Valley, and I've, you know, I've made mistakes throughout my career that have prepped me for times like this. College Game Day is brought to you by Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy, and AT&T. The nation's largest 4G network. AT&T. Rethink possible. In Austin, they are hungry for a big win. Number eight versus number 11 as Texas welcomes West Virginia and tries to snap a seven-game skid against ranked teams. The Mountaineers Big 12 debut the highest scoring game in league history their offense is the talk of the sport right now and so the eyes of Texas are in the ears quarterback Geno Smith and those speedy targets Tavon Austin Stedman Bailey can they be slowed down those guys combined for 89 catches in September Geno's numbers 20 touchdowns no picks 83 percent completions after embarrassing Baylor, Smith went directly to the tape room to begin studying Texas. And that's where Todd McShay found him on Thursday as he journeyed into West by God. Rolling into Morgantown, West Virginia right now, and I'm fired up. Go to get to sit down with Geno Smith, watch tape, and see what he's seeing through his eyes. What's going on, man? How I heard you missed six passes this past week. I did, I did. All right, we gotta, we gotta take a look at this. <laughs> Go back to LSU a year ago. You were staring down your primary target a little bit more than you are this year. Is that fair? I think that's fair. You know, last year I, I missed a lot of throws, and, you know, a, a result of, you know, when you say staring it down is because I didn't have the familiarity with it to know my guy's gonna be here at this certain time. All right, now fast forward to this year, I'm seeing a lot more of that helmet movement. What are you reading? I'm looking left the entire time after this snap. I'm just looking left, pushing these guys over. You see that backer? Yep, He's yep, looking there he up. goes. He's following your eyes. Now I'm trying to get inside. Not a good window. Not a good window, so we got to check all the way down to your third receiver here, and you do it in what? Second and a half, two seconds? I didn't want to force it, so I got right down to my check now, and, uh, J.D. Woods, and he did a good job getting the first down. Gino steps up in the pocket, fires a deep ball down. Bill has Tavon Austin wide open, makes the catch to the 15 with a 10 fight. End zone, touchdown! They do a great job of uh, covering the initial reads. All five of these guys are covered right now. I'm setting my feet in the pocket. I see him getting deep. You know, I shuffle, I find him, and it turns out to be a touchdown. I see this, you know, the, the big guy level, Aaron Rodgers. I see a lot in terms of pocket manipulation, the way you handle it and feel it, and not have to look down and not to take him down and run. Yeah, that's my last option. You know, I, I use my legs if need be. If not, I'll probably never have a rushing yard. Timing pattern in the end zone for Stephen Bailey, and he makes the catch in the back corner on the delightfully thrown ball. I love this throw. There's two things, the timing and then the trajectory. Walk me through what goes through your mind pre-snap, because you know right away where you're going with this ball. I'm putting the ball over his outside shoulder, not giving the defender a chance to make a play on it. This is a throw that I was terrible at last year. I couldn't hit this to save my life. I got in my own head. And once I missed one, you know, I was kind of like, man, you know, what's wrong with me? But I can make this throw in my sleep pretty much. Texas defense you're about to face, I think it's the most talented defense that you've faced since that LSU game a year ago. How much more prepared are you now to face a defense of that quality? To be honest with you, 
Um, going into Texas, it's not my first rodeo, and that's kind of funny, but, you know, it's true. It's not, you know, I've made mistakes throughout my career that have prepped me for times like this, so, you know, I'm going to go out there as confident as ever, continue to be calm, and just play the game the way it's supposed to be playing. Todd told us he came away very impressed with Smith. Draft stock way up. Now, a challenge today for Smith, besides the fact that Texas has better athletes than Baylor, a lot better, is that Sean Alston, their top running back, a physical runner, left home with a leg injury. So, David, Texas really catches a break there. They're going to try to make West Virginia one-dimensional just to have a chance to slow down Geno and company. Yeah, and they're going to get theirs. And as a Texas defensive coordinator, if you're game planning, you know they're going to score points. But what you got to do is important. You got to disrupt Geno somehow. His rhythm is so good. He reads defenses so well. So when you do disguise a blitz and bring it, it's important that you have all eyes on number one. Tavon Austin, after the catch, is one of the best players in college football. You better identify him every time you bring pressure. They're going to get there as you tackle. When you get in the red zone, the field shrinks. The offense can spread you out more, but you have less ground to cover. You can show more things, bring less guys. You drop eight guys into coverage. Now you don't have as much ground to cover. You make them kick field goals because they don't want to run the football consistently. So all you have to do if you're Texas is pressure Gino because obviously he's going to he's going to go off if you don't. Baylor, they found that out last week. They didn't blitz him. He absolutely torched him. Texas will win this game because Texas will get pressure with their ends, make Geno's life a little bit more difficult. But more importantly, they're going to lock in on number one and say other guys have to beat you, including Stedman Bailey, who's a great player. Don't let number one beat you. David, you slipped the pick in there. Yeah, a little bit. Mac Slide Brown joking that his defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz, spent the week under his desk. When Diaz did emerge, he quipped that there's no free agency. You just got to coach your young guys to grow up quickly. Texas is hoping that the crowd noise and the occasional pressure is going to disrupt Smith just enough, maybe bat down a couple of passes, tackle a lot better, force West Virginia to kick a couple of field goals. But the best linebacker, Jordan Hicks, is still out with an injured groin. Last year we were young on the outside and we were strong down the middle. This year we're young down the middle and with Jordan Hicks and Brandon Moore being out, a lot of youth played. We've struggled at linebacker and we've struggled some at, at safety. And, uh, so all of those are things that need to get fixed. We've had some mistakes. We've missed some tackles and we went back to the film and saw places where you could have just wrapped, we could have wrapped up and made plays. So, I mean, it's things that are correctable and so we're going to get those corrected and we'll be better. I think tackling is the, you know, the biggest thing for us. Um, we're giving up a lot of big plays because of things like tackling and misalignments. So I think the, the one thing for the defense is just not giving up big plays. Texas will try to play ball control, but Malcolm Brown, the running back, is not in there, so they got a committee because keeping the ball away from him, Kirk, seems like the best way to defend Gino. It, it, yeah. it, it may be, but going back to what Todd was sitting there and talking with, with Gino with about his offense, the thing that stands out to me, second year in the system, not just for Geno Smith, but the entire offense to understand Dana Holgerson's offense. So now they're executing in a way where they don't have to think about it. Geno Smith right now throws the ball with such confidence. This is a tight window. You ever receiver coming across the safety on the right is the player who you would think would be able to have a chance to come over and get in the way of this but he's not even intimidated he doesn't flinch and he makes that throw this is the thing that the NFL will love here comes the blitz here comes the pressure they get to him he stands in the pocket and throws an accurate ball to give his receiver a chance to make a play and you talk about hey let's play let's play zero let's press let's blitz play press coverage on the outside, play man-to-man -man on the outside, and take our chances. We don't have anybody in the back. No safety support. It's a theory. It's a wrinkle that defenses try. Well, you better not, because a quick little slant to Tavon Austin, if one guy misses, Tavon Austin could take it to the house. So here comes old Texas's defense. Before Geno Smith, we said it earlier, even got to the stadium, they're already allowing 15 yards per completion. <laughs> right. And he hasn't even gotten there yet. Yeah. So the challenge, I think, will be for Texas's front four. Can they hold up against the run to allow Manny Diaz's defense to tighten up their coverage, try to disrupt that timing? Yep. The goal is to make Geno have to hold the ball. If you yeah. make him hold the ball, then Jeff Coat and, and Okafor can get there and get pressure. I think yeah. Texas will find it today. I think they'll play with emotion. I think they're tired of hearing about West Virginia, West Virginia Geno Smith. Exactly. I like Texas' defense to prevail. That's, that's a good call. That's a real good call. I think the Texas offense, they're going to have to play ball control offense. Like, like uh, CF said, the best defense against West Virginia is a great offense. And I think that they can do it. David Ash, he's completed 78% of his passes, 10 touchdowns, only one INT. He's playing at a high level right now. They have to sustain 
12, 14, 16 play drives. And at the end of those drives, touchdowns, not field goals. They will move the ball on the Mountaineers defense. There's no doubt about that. We all understand that. <laughs> but they got to come up, come away with touchdowns and not field goals. Yeah. I like West Virginia, though, oh, to win man. this game. Do you? Yes, sir. Gotcha. I like the Mountaineers. All right. Piggyback on what you said about ball control, they've got to run the football. They run the ball well, 200 yards a game, and they convert third down, third and long, fourth in the nation at doing that. Two important points because, number one, it keeps the Mountaineers offense on the sideline. A, Texas wins the game. But watch mm -hmm. out. There's a guy named D.J. Monroe. Okay. He's a returner. Yeah. And he's yeah. excellent. Watch that. Done. Texas yeah. wins. Mac Brown hoping for an edge in the kicking game, believing his team perhaps can create a non-offensive touchdown, which would be big. You get a service break and some points It'd be big. without the offense having to score. Yeah. Yep. Texas against Oklahoma, Red River next week. Today, though, the Sooners have some business in Lubbock because they got shocked at home by Texas Tech as a huge underdog last year. Some missed field goals. Bob Soups has never lost consecutive regular season games. They had a bye week to get ready and think about it. Right. Stu, what about the road game in Lubbock? You know, I picked Oklahoma to get to the national championship game. I haven't thrown the towel in just yet. So I All got right. Oklahoma beating Texas Tech today. But it's going to be a great game because Texas Tech is going to come in with a lot of confidence, Coach. He one stat also, in eight years, the Sooners are 18-0 after a regular season loss. Stoops wins them, boy, just he, like Chris said. He, he Stoops, gets, them, gets them ready. How about the stat that Texas Tech is number one in the nation <laughs> oh, yeah. in total defense? You've seen their competition. Uh, Northwestern North 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 State, North State, State, Texas State, State <laughs> New Mexico, and Iowa State. Right. Well, I think old Landry Jones gets after it today. <laughs> I, I, I like the Sooners to, to get it done. Old school Youngstown payback. Yes, <laughs> TCU's home conference debut should have been celebrated, but it's been marred by the arrest for a DUI yeah. for Casey Pahal, the quarterback who's number five in passing efficiency. Yeah. Should the Horned Frogs, who are very nicked up at running back, and with Travoyne Boykin, the redshirt freshman, stepping in at quarterback, upset alert against the Cyclones today. I like Iowa State. Oh, I like oh him outright. Too. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, outright. I, I, I like him too because nobody expects him to win. That's right. Exactly. I I like, I'm picking the Cyclones. Yeah, yeah. I got we're all picking oh, the Cyclones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what Iowa do you think of that, man? Even with that court. Yeah, turmoil. Oh, no, 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 he got turmoil. turmoil. Wait, he got yeah. something for us. They're trying to win with defense and smoke and mirrors on offense, but they are it's a just, touchdown home the favorite. The ball's on the tee there. All you got to do is follow through. You're favored by a touchdown there, man. Why not go the other way? I think there's a serious reason to be concerned there with that. But Paul Hall, quote, he needs help. Says Gary Patterson. No, so we'll yeah, see. It's an indefinite suspension, not just today. All right. After a couple of lackluster efforts, LSU headed to the swamp. We're going to examine the recent issues and see what they got to fix today against Florida. Marcus Lattimore has torched Georgia the last couple of years. But the dogs have a couple of young pups of their own in the backfield. Predictions, detail analysis on this one. Disagreement on the eventual outcome. College game day. Enjoying our stay in Columbia. College Game Day is brought to you by AT&T. Now for Will and Ravi from On the Way to Saturday and the Twitter Sign of the Week. South Carolina's nickname gives you a lot to work with in the sign department. Wouldn't you say an AC? Great fear the spur. Oh no, Mark Rick. Feeling the pain. Clowning, training, <laughs> Murray in the dog. <laughs> oh no, there. Here comes Honey Bobo. Mike Bobo is the play caller for Georgia. <laughs> oh, the winning sign at Cameron Bunn. There's Lee's legendary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That dog is ugly. Oh, Robbie, the road trippers. Game day forecast partly clowny with a chance of pain. It's a play on Jadavian's name at game day using hash CGD signs in the swamp today. LSU comes calling last meeting there was that over the shoulder blind flip on the fake field goal. Josh Jasper scooped it up. Jarrett Lee the late touchdown pass oh, oh, just like the hat and company practiced it <laughs> last year though. No histrionics were needed. The Gators were slow roasted like a pig at a Cajun tailgate. They got worn down in the fourth quarter, beaten soundly. They say they're much tougher and stronger, haven't allowed a fourth quarter point this season. Florida used the bye week to heal up. Good to go, Jelani Jenkins, Dominic Easley, Sharif Floyd, 
And Trey Burton, that is a big four to get back. Gators are in the top ten for the first time in two years. This would be Will Muschamp's biggest win yet. LSU swept the East for the last couple of years, but where have the true Tigers been? Les Miles today looking for leadership in a hostile house. They have been listless every game except Washington. The last two weeks, they've had 19 penalties. They've lost five fumbles. Not Miles-like. That's against Auburn and Towson. Zach Mettenberger told to speed up his decision-making, try not to extend plays with those heavy legs. The pass pro has dead set a huge issue. Tigers give it up 11 sacks. They've lost 34 more yards in sacks than they've had as a team. That is a shock. Mettenberger has a big arm, but the passing game just isn't there. The Tigers say, though, you're going to see a different LSU, the true LSU today. The attention to detail has been a lot sharper this week. Everybody on the team really realizes that uh, you know, this is our season at stake, this game. Everybody's just buying in. They, they, they know that we, we didn't play LSU football uh, the past couple of weeks. Their front four is you know, the best front four in college football. If you try to get east and west with them, you're going to get nowhere because they're, they're really fast. They do a lot of stuff that you think is simple, but they have the speed to turn into something big. you got to give them different looks because once those guys pin their ears back up front, now they're tough to block. They use a lot of motions and they have a lot of fast guys, so if your eyes aren't disciplined, you can get lost very quickly and uh, blockers will get on you fast. It hasn't really been a game of this magnitude here in, in a while. If we can put it all together, it'll set the foundation for the rest of the season and, and get us going in the right direction. Now we're into it. October is going to be a massive month in the SEC. Can the Tigers go on the road and just flip a switch and yeah. look like they <laughs> were supposed to look this season? Two most run-heavy offenses in the SEC. Right. Old-fashioned ground and pound. And Les Miles does get J.C. Copeland, that 270-pound pullback. Exactly. Back. He was a leg injury. Thought they might not have him. They're going to have him. That's a key. Well, he's big in pass protection and the running game, yeah. too. I just think it's going to come down to LSU's defense. You saw Jeff Driscoll, Florida's quarterback, say, hey, they have the best defensive line that we've seen all season. They're deep and they are heavy. They rotate a lot of guys in to keep guys fresh. And then they're linebackers. They're protected. That defensive line don't let anybody get to that second level to get to those linebackers they're not great but they're great at running east and west traveling um, covering a lot of ground and making plays so I think that uh, LSU's defense is going to give their offense opportunities to, to win and to succeed so I think that that defense is going to win this game for LSU I got mm -hmm. LSU coach and a close one huh? but to upset LSU the Gators got to out defense the Tigers yeah and they're pretty hot now the defense coming off the first shutout in 11 years Florida and they've only allowed 13 points in the second half. I got a feel on this one. The Gators going to win one in the swamp. Then they just have to think, think about Les Miles, Bo Schembechler guy. He's on the road. People are questioning his team. He's going <laughs> to go back to win in the old-fashioned way. It's what he's going to try to do with defense, special teams, ball control offense. I think it opens the door up for Florida's own offense. The Gators have come a long way from who they were against Bowling Green in week one to now having a team that they believe in. Brent Peace, remember they brought him in from Boise State. This is more the Boise State style of offense. Two backs in front of Gillisley opens up a hole along with, you see the pulling guard from the backside. It's a couple little different looks. The quarterback, Jeff Driscoll, this is the last game that he played against Kentucky, comes off the read from the right side this is very different for him comes off his primary steps into the pocket and then makes a throw into a tight window for a touchdown he's going to need to make plays like this if he has time to throw that's a big if he has time to throw into that lsu secondary there's a there's a chance to be able to make plays downfield for the gators and this is the wrinkle again here's trey burton a little fake to the jet sweep it occupies the safety just enough to give burton a chance to get to the outside it's little wrinkles like this that bring piece I think now has confidence in calling with Jeff Driscoll in this game's offense low scoring game Driscoll and the Gators offense make enough plays late the Gators again keep this train going and they become a huge factor wow. in the SEC East because whoever wins this game eventually is gonna have to play the Florida Gators yes absolutely Gators got both of these teams here coming up in the next month Gillisley, I know you really like this back. The bye week to rest up, lightly used against Kentucky, should be fresh, but can he get enough yards on the ground? And you know, you know Les Miles is gonna make for it to prove they can stop the run. Yeah. And if they can, huh? you're asking Mettenberg gonna make plays that he hasn't yet made this season. Pick the short field. Whichever defense can give their own offense the yeah. short field to work with, yes. yeah, that'll, that'll be a big factor LSU. in this game. And Turnovers that, too. That yeah. Florida quarterback Drizzle. 
I saw him big leagues. He's a tough runner. He's going to be. He's going to be a great quarterback. He's going to be like Tim Tebow for sure. He's going to take a pound in the day. Watch. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I can't wait to watch this one. Fans of both these teams hoping that LSU can go to the swamp and win. The swamp. By the way, the Bayou is where the Gamecocks head next week. Major showdown if both LSU and South Carolina can emerge victorious today. Intriguing day in the Pac-12. We'll talk about that coming up. Jarvis Jones, top playmaker for the Dogs, will also be featured. And our area coverage brought to you by MetLife. You can see how MetLife provides the coverage you need. MetLife, you can do this. Becomes tougher to beat in the East. Of course, the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, just a distant dream. But the winner of this game can can still dream. No question. Meanwhile, in Lexington, Mississippi State for the nooner game. Dan oh, Mullen's team number two in the nation in turnover margin. The Kentucky just collapsed in the second half last week. Well, Mississippi State kind of sneaking around. Dan Mullen has a team, quarterback making good plays, and Tyler Russell. Keep an eye on them in the West. On the other end. Gene Chizik at Auburn <laughs> has against uh, Arkansas. That makes it a must win these days, right, when you play Pretty Arkansas? Much. Yeah, I think it boils down to a must win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be the team the team to lose to them right now. <laughs> exactly. You know? Don't Rutgers be the team down to the when Arkansas <laughs> <laughs> discovers that they no. still are no. carrying no. and trying. Huh? You don't want to do that. <laughs> Pac-12, Oregon State is home after a couple of road wins. They've celebrated each victory with a visit to the In-N-Out Burger. Now, the problem... <laughs> as they play at home is that there is no in and out burger near Corvallis. It's oh, 359 man. miles away. But David Pollock, our friend, the Love only Spurs. beaver believer from day one, he's called every <laughs> Oregon State win, and so he's our in and out delivery boy today. Uh, we got you covered, man. Oh, you got wait, wait, that wait, wait, hat. Wait. Got you covered. You already made pecan pie. Now. Yeah, I know exactly. See, y'all weren't, weren't believers. Don't worry, I got oh, all of y'all. Coach. coach, hold on, I got you one too. double-double okay. here. Oh, oh, Des, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got something special. Yeah, I got something for uh, Des. I figured on. as much. I figured I had Des, something special. Des is, you know, Des really in the <laughs> Oh, okay. So, uh, we, got, we got a little something got different. Oh, we got Des there. there. I thought you the only guy that could do skits up here. We, yeah, got, yeah. we got the new guy doing skits <laughs> now. Okay, so, uh, all right. I see how we roll. We know you weren't buying yet, Des, so Coach Riley wanted to make sure that you you were all on board and believe in now, now they got a game they're supposed to win, though. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, Dan still doesn't think they're going to win. All right, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Rich Rod? I'm just saying. Okay, anybody. Saying. It doesn't even matter. It's, anybody. Anybody. Whoever they're playing. It's Wazoo. Wazoo. It's Wazoo. Mike, Mike no, Leach. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Leach. Yeah. Mike Leach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this Oregon State team, whether it's the in and out burger or Sean Mannion making passes downfield, I think they are the real deal. They're, they have athletic ability on offense. I think the only way Mike Leach's ball club can hang tonight, they got to score with him. They got to try to make some big plays in the pass game. They can do that, they might be able to hang around. UCLA at Cal. Get this juice out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> Zach Mannion has been sacked 22 times the last three games. I expect him to get sacked a lot today. Linebackers Damian Holmes and Anthony Barr, those guys have 10 sacks together. They're going to hunt down Maynard and put him on the ground today. Meanwhile, Arizona and Stanford both need to bounce back off losses. Can the Cats block Chase Thomas and Trent Murphy and Shane Scove? Cardinals physical up front, but Matt Scott has some speedy weapons if he's not harassed into turnovers. Josh Nunes under 50% the last three games, so basic bruising running. Stephon Taylor is the key. The Cats have been very soft against the run so far. The team that stuns Stanford, Washington has an even bigger chore tonight in Austin Stadium. It's the Ducks going head-to-head -head with SNL again. Another late-night affair for Oregon. <laughs> Chip Kelly's teams have never lost, never lost between week two and week eight. They are 25 and 0. Yeah. Unbeatable this time of the year. That's, a, that's an interesting that's one. They've beaten good. Washington eight straight in the rivalry, none closer than 17 points. Wow. That Husky offensive line, a little bit overmatched. The Ducks are going to swarm on it. 
Justin Wilcox is the defensive coordinator. He actually spoiled Kelly's debut when he was at Boise State, and he's a former duck. Yes. So he'll do his best to get the Huskies' defense inspired like they were against Stanford. Yeah, and where's this game being played? It's in Austin. And, and it's at night. Yeah. Okay. And, and that, that, that's really all you need to know. If, if, if this were in Washington, chance to get everybody fired up, they might have a chance. It'll be interesting for a, a half, and then Oregon. Just They're just too good on both sides of the ball. They'll pull away from, uh, from Washington. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the game I want to look at is Arizona against Stanford. Mm -hmm. How Stanford going to bounce back from that loss to Washington and all the talk about Josh Nunes, should he be replaced? I think they're going to be okay. I like this game. But it's going to be one that you have to watch. I think it's going to be close. But I think Stanford, Kirk, will win this game. I think that's the, probably the most intriguing game that is outside of the SEC is Stanford surprised a lot of people with their performance against USC and then to lay flat a little bit on the road. Yeah. This is a big game for them, not just for this week, but big picture yeah. in the in the uh, Pac-12, they need a win today. Well, I like Oregon State. Oregon State has beaten two top 25 teams, UCLA and Arizona, both way for home. Now they got to go home as a favorite against Washington State. We'll see how they act. Guess you need some ice cold double double to sell. You're finally jumping in the bandwagon for Oregon State. He, he wants that juice. Uh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Blake. Blake that orange black, juice. <laughs> black and orange. There you go. There you go. You know what there. happened five years ago today? By the way, no. Mm -mm. One of the biggest upsets in college football history. This was the date, October 6th, when Stanford went to the Coliseum as a 41-point dog. I remember that. And shocked the oh, fade yeah, in the exactly. left corner. Remember, yeah. So yeah. you called this going to be an upset Saturday in honor of the guy who was the hero in that game, you recall? Uh, quarterback. Backup quarterback. Yeah. I would pull out the Benjamin if you know his name, but it, oh, Tavita Pritchard. Number 14? Tavita Pritchard. The yeah. guy who yeah. wow, done almost man, nothing before great. throwing that touchdown pass. Who caught yeah. the pass? Mark something. Bradley? I don't know. We're going to look that, look that one up. The, the was double Mark, wasn't Mark Bradley. I don't know. Was, uh, Mark, Mark something. I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure that one out. We're going to pick UCLA and Cal later on in the pick segment. Sounds good. Yes. Ready for that? Be careful with the Bruins on that one. Yes. Right. So now you're, now you're with the juice. Oregon State. Yeah. There you go with this. Too. Jarvis Jones has been a <laughs> one-man gang for Georgia's defense so far. Good feature on the guy who's number one on Mel Kuyper's big board right now, how close he came to not being able to play at all. You know, being paralyzed, um, you know, not being able to walk again. I mean, some frightening things when you think about it. They told me I'd probably never play again. And so, I mean, it was devastating. The Cheesehead Real Fan Cam is brought to you by She's it. Tell us your future of fandom idea, and you could win $10,000 and the ultimate college game day experience. Visit ESPN.com backslash She's it. I'm going to talk about SEC fans. You see the She's it real fan of the week there, Matt Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But now he lives here in Columbia. Spanish graduate student here. On the other side, you got a guy named Mr. Gilbert who's made it to 456 straight Georgia games, home and away since 1974. He had a heart procedure a couple days ago, like in Georgia. Didn't stop him. On the road, here tonight. That is serious dedication. Serious. This is a border feud that seven hours from now is going to be renewed. Two states divided by the Chattooga River, which is the setting for that fictional river in the movie Deliverance. That's a classic movie for you young people back here and a very scary one for a lot of us. 20 years ago, Georgia gave South Carolina their SEC baptism and it wasn't a gentle one. Steve Spurrier never liked the Bulldogs going back to his days as a player and a coach in Florida. If he could beat Georgia for the third straight year, that would be a first. It would also be the first time South Carolina ever wins a top 10 versus top 10 collision. Their best weapon is Marcus Lattimore, the guy who two years ago, as a true freshman, announced his arrival in college football on the very opening drive against Georgia. He hammered the dogs defense. This year, almost half his yards after contact. Two monster games against Georgia, better than any other opponent. But Connor Shaw has been a 90% passer himself the last couple weeks. The average pass is going less than six yards beyond the line, but he's avoided picks. Gamecocks wide receivers are turning small gains into long plays. Jarvis Jones, it's his job to make those tackles tonight. He says he wants to sneak up on them like a crocodile against a wildebeest, Tom. Make a vicious sneak attack against the ball carriers, and he's capable. 
No more lying in the weeds for this Bulldog, Chris. Certainly not after all the attention that has been coming Jarvis Jones' way. Jarvis has it all. It's not even fair. That's what Ken Norton Jr., his former linebacker coach at USC, said about him. But all that skill, strength, and speed doesn't mean anything without health. The truth Jones understands more than most, and his journey from California to Georgia proves it. To be young, strong, talented, and to be finished. That's where Jarvis Jones was three years ago as a promising freshman linebacker at USC. I definitely had my mindset of just, you know, become one of the, the, one of the best linebackers at USC. That all changed Halloween night 2009 against Oregon. Jones, wearing number 51, was lined up on the edge in the third quarter. The receiver caught the ball, and I was going down to hit him as he was falling to the ground, and I ended up hitting our cornerback in the head with the crown of my head. My shoulder just went numb, and I laid there probably like two, three seconds, and I got up, and I, I know it wasn't right because my arm, I couldn't, couldn't really move my arm much. As a result of the hit, Jones was diagnosed with spinal stenosis, a narrowing of the spinal column. USC would not clear him medically to play for the Trojans again. Did anybody tell you what, in their view, you'd be risking? Being paralyzed, um, you know, not being able to walk again. Um, so, I mean, some frightening things when you think about it. They told me I'd probably never play again. And so, I mean, it was devastating. Jones refused to accept the diagnosis. He thought he was healthy, and he thought with another opinion, and maybe other people might see it the same way. Leaving USC, Jones sought a second chance back home in Georgia. His family consulted with specialists in three different states. Independently, each cleared him to play football again. Jarvis Jones would not let go. Why not say it's over? For three doctors to one to tell me that they think I can play again, you know, um, it definitely lifted my spirit because I hadn't got as low as I can get, you know. Is lift a barrel off my heart. What, if any, apprehension did you see in him when he returned to the zero. field? Zero. I saw zero apprehension. As we were trying to phase him in, there wasn't much phasing going on. He thought it was done. He thought, hey, it's, football is gone. You know, I'm going to have to find a new path in life and, and express how he fought through it. It's a great story, and it really motivates our guys to know, like I said, to take every chance to get better, to get stronger. Look who's there. As an All-American last season, a projected top five NFL pick this season, Jones is Georgia's unquestioned defensive leader. The All-American comes up with a big play. Playing proof and competitive example of the power of a second chance. You'll find few players in all of college football who appreciate the opportunity each Saturday presents. How disruptive can Jones be against Missouri a few weeks back? Two forced fumbles, an interception, and two sacks. Number one on Mel Kuyper's big board. But Chris, some questions about whether he's fully 100% right now. Been dealing with a growing injury. His coach says he hasn't talked about it. We'll have to see how explosive he can be. Because if he is, we know he's a game changer. Yeah, Tom, he was possessed last week. Meanwhile, for the Georgia offense, the two young pups dubbed Gershel. Uh, Tavares King, get it? Like Herschel, the greatest freshman ever. These guys are ripping off huge gains. Todd Gurley leads the conference in rushing yards and touchdowns. Eight runs of 20-plus yards. And Keith Marshall has been almost as productive. 8.2 a carry through five games. Serious burst. And what teammates love about these guys, the humility, the contrast to the departed Isaiah Crowell. But today is by far the biggest challenge for these young dogs. South Carolina's front seven is very stout. The running so far has set up the efficient and explosive passing game of Aaron Murray. At least two touchdowns in every game, and he's improved his completion percentage every game. Deadly downfield. Ten completions of passes thrown beyond 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's a lot. But his reliable third down receiver, Michael Bennett, injured his knee in practice on Tuesday. He's out for the season. Somebody else is going to have to step up. Disrupting Murray, the main task for Spurrier's pass rushers off the edge. Georgia right now is the best offense in the SEC, and they can run it and throw. They do it both. This is what we got. We have trust in our players and our scheme. Um, you're going to have to make plays. Everybody do their job on their offense, and 
They just all clicking together right now, picking up a lot of points. So we're going to try to contain them, keep them, keep them in the box, and play our defense. And they're a very talented defense. They don't, um, they're not going to try to out-scheme you or confuse you. They, they, they line up and play football. Everybody's getting to the ball, everybody running to the ball, making it look like it's 14 people out down the field. Our defense is just, just in the zone. I mean, they're scary bookends. <laughs> six, six, clowny. Six, six eight, eight, Taylor on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, you look at, at Jadavion Clowney and what he brings to the defense, he's a difference maker. He's the one who makes that whole defense go. Using the Home Depot coach's playbook, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about, how he affects that defense. And here he is right here, lined up at the top of the screen. And he's going to fire off the ball, and look how he stones the pulling guard, leaving his right arm open so he still can make the tackle. Guys, that's an all-world play. You just don't see that every day. Now, here he is lined up to the left of the screen. He's going to use a swim move to get past the tackle and sack the quarterback. He worked on his hands the whole offseason, trying to get better technique. Now, watch him right here, lined up in two-point stance. He's going to crash hard in the A-gap. When he crashes hard, it brings three blockers to him, leaving. Even Devin Taylor one-on-one -on -one with the running back. Taylor gets into the backfield and he disrupts the play. This is what Jadavian Clowney brings to the defense. He, they can move him around like they did Melvin Ingram, so it, it creates one-on-one -on -one matchups for Taylor. And Taylor's an excellent football player, too. And like, like CF said, you got Jadavian, he's 6'6". Six, six. Um, Taylor is 6'8". Hard to throw around these guys, hard to block these guys. They're very athletic. I think this defense is going to be lights out tonight. I want to see how they play against those freshman tailbacks, man. And there, there's another freshman in the lineup for Georgia and he plays right tackle. So you have a true freshman at right tackle along with these two true freshman running backs to go against this defense. So it'd be fun to see the youth of Georgia. But all the talk about the freshman backs, to me, Aaron Murray, I think, is the difference. And I think here's an idea of seeing these backs and the attention that they bring because Gurley is so physical. Marshall has the speed. He has the ability to get to the outside. He gets to the perimeter. Here's outstanding blocking. He's a patient, patient, and then hits the crease. He's a track man. So when he gets out there, it's going to be very hard to catch up with him if you get to the second and third level but this is I think the difference really in where this offense is Murray in his third year as a starter Marlon Brown's been able to step up and give them a presence on the outside he's 6'5 here's the recognition of a blitz you see the safety there in the SEC sign he's sneaking around there here he comes on a blitz Murray great job of getting the ball out to My Malcolm Mitchell this all week we heard about this injury to Bennett what's going to happen to Georgia's offense they do have depth if there's one position that they have depth it's out at receiver Malcolm Mitchell is the freshman from a year ago with all the suspensions they moved him over to the defense well now he's come back to wide receiver look for him number 26 to step up in a big way to take some of the pressure off those other receivers Kirk when the game is on the line yes sir the old ball coach is good with the Lattimore <laughs> run Marcus run Run, Marcus, run. He's South Carolina's all-time leader in touchdowns and rushing touchdowns. He, in two games against Georgia, he's averaged over 200 yards rushing in each game. He has helped South Carolina win 23 of the last 26 home games. Now, South Carolina has won nine straight. Nine straight games. That's really good. A lot of things point to South Carolina's win. A lot of things point to South Carolina's win. They are so determined not to let Latimer beat them again. Buck 82, Buck 76. You know it's coming like clockwork. <laughs> yeah. Especially in these kind of games. Yeah. Downhill. He goes to Latimer. Run, what Marcus, run. We're yeah. all excited exactly. about this defensive collision, Des. Yeah. First crack. How do you see it? Wow. You know, it's, it's a tough one. It was really tough. I had to flip a coin. You didn't flip a coin. I promise you I flipped a coin. I think that the game cops will win this game. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Hard-fought defensive. I will not be surprised, though, if something air uncharacteristic happens offensively for Georgia that we haven't seen, like maybe some turnovers, fumbles, something like that. That would not shock me tonight. Yeah. All the conviction of a coin flip, huh? If you're going to do that, don't head. admit it. Don't admit it. Bull cocktails. <laughs> Look into the camera and say, game cocktail. <laughs> All right, Mr. Pollock. I, I didn't get to flip the coin, Chris. What say you about this one? Something tells me you didn't need to flip the coin. No, I, I didn't need to. And when you look at the balance on offense for Georgia with the two freshmen coming in, with Aaron Murray starting at the quarterback spot, I think Georgia wins this game because of that. Now, listen, their defense 
has to step up. They love me here. It's crazy. Their defense has to step up and make plays because they have been overrated this whole season. Both stars, Rambo, Ogletree, both in the lineup. They got to step up and stop 21 if they want to win. South Carolina made about a field goal favorite that's been moving. I've heard more people on TV, a lot more people, picking Georgia, Georgia. than South really? Carolina yeah. so far. Hmm. Hmm. But the headgear prediction is what these folks are waiting for. Something's got to give, Mr. Corso. Neither Georgia nor South Carolina has ever won when you picked them. Holy mackerel. Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Something's got to happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, we'll be joined by South Carolina native, University of South Carolina alum, country music star, and Hootie the Blowfish frontman, Darius Rucker, right here next to us for Saturday Selection straight ahead. College Game Day is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And in part by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Cause I didn't know. Rucker, one of his five Billboard number one country hits, but it was in 1995, right here in this space. Hootie the Blowfish rocked the horseshoe. A bunch of guys that met here as freshmen. Absolutely. Darius Rucker, good memories. Thank you for being here, my Thank friend. You for me. Look at this representing the class, class baby. Hey, I'm, I'm not my class. class. I'm representing the class institution, the University of South Carolina. There you go. Come out to the class. There you go. Man. Absolutely. Time for Chevrolet Saturday selections. Log on to ESPN.com, search Chevrolet to play alongside. We'll begin with a game that's going to kick off minutes from now, Darius. Homecoming in Happy Valley. Northwestern has a problem beating Penn State, but try to get to 6 0 for the first time in half a century. Penn, uh, Northwestern is my Rose Bowl pick. So they I are. Go, is that right? I love Mr. Football Coulter down there, what he's doing with the from wide receiver yeah. and quarterback. Wow. I think they're going to go to Rose Bowl, so I got to go with Northwestern. Oh, Good go. pick. Northwestern special teams win it. Upset. I like Kane Coulter. I'm with you on this. On the road, they get it done, get it to 6 0. Purdue is Herb Street's Rose Bowl pick. Michigan come off and off a terrible game for off a bye at West Lafayette. The one thing you can count on Michigan to do against an average defense is look great. And, yeah. <laughs> oh. and so I think today Michigan's going to get the win. A pick but a shot. Oh, <laughs> a little Big Ten shot. Not so fast. Don't forget the game's played on grass and it's high. Purdue. But Purdue, Purdue. and Tavian Edison and Gary Bush Purdue. receivers, Purdue. they like that tall grass. Purdue. I like Purdue as well. The Cornhuskers off a big comeback. Take on an Ohio State team. Can Nebraska cut down on mistakes, not put the ball on the ground, and beat Braxton Miller and company? Oh, I don't think so. I think Urban Meyer, they're, they're playing to win them all. I don't think they're going to win them all, but they're going to win this one. All right. Oh, man. Not so fast the second time. They're banged up, Ohio State is. Nebraska upset. I think the two quarterbacks are ultimately going to decide the outcome, I, and I think that Martinez turns it over late, and I really think Braxton Miller with his arm makes big plays in this game. I like Ohio State. Chicago Soldier Field, a renewal of the old Catholics versus Convicts series. The Canes defense has been rough, Darius. They can't stop anybody. Can the Irish offense finally get it going in this game tonight? You use a great word today. Their defense is awful. It is. And uh, I think the Golic <laughs> boys and Danny Spawn would kill me if I don't pick the, pick the Irish, so I'm going to go with the Irish. Irish oh, great pick, but closer than the experts think. The experience in Notre Dame and that front seven, getting after the Miami inexperience up front, I think that's the difference. I like Notre Dame. A couple teams that are kind of struggling but really need a win. The Hokies at the Tar Heels. I like Virginia Tech. I'm, a bit, I'm good friends with Coach Beamer, and I just think, They've already lost the games they should lose. They, they're going to they're win out. South Carolina can't pick North Carolina, right? Isn't there like a little bylaw? I can, but I'm not. You can't. <laughs> hey, that was a good pick. He says they're back in the ACC. Another upset. Virginia Tech. I like North Carolina at home. I think their defense and Giovanni Bernard. I think that's the difference in the game. Okay, or, uh, North Carolina. At Cal, the Bears are one and four. They're starting to talk about the head coach's buyout. Jeff Tedford, that's not a good sign. Bruins and Bears, typically a, a close game. I'm going to go as far out on the limb as I can, and I don't know why I looked at this one, but I got to go with Cal. At home, oh, I think man. Cal's going to get off the sly. UCLA, they're building, and they've got good things going on down there, but I think Cal's just going to get circle the, the wagon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Circle, circle, circle the wagon. Strawberry Canyon. Circle the wagon. Let me give you another reason Cal's going to win. The visiting team is 1 and 11. 1 11 in that game. So it's at Cal. Cal wins oh. it. Uh, the, what, the history of the, of the game? <laughs> 1 and 11? Yes. I think for that reason, I'm going with UCLA. <laughs> what the heck? That's the kind of logic we're going to use. I like the Bruins on the road. You want history? West Virginia and Texas, the only previous meeting. 7 6. A little higher scoring. Yes. Maybe tonight here is the. Yeah. 
Longhorns try to beat a ranked team for the first time after a seven-game losing streak to him. We're going to call today, today's David Ash is his, com his coming out there. Yeah. Because they can't stop anybody. They're going to have to put up a lot of points. So I think West Virginia is going to win it, but I think we're going to be talking about David Ash tomorrow. All right. But, but, but the yeah. Mountaineers win, win it on the road. Yeah, it? I, I just okay. don't think they can do enough to, nah, to do it. Nah, oh. nah, 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 nah. <laughs> should have stayed with Ash. Texas running game wins it. Let the record stay. Yeah. He, There's Rutgers, a college football yeah. junkie. Yeah. <laughs> he has no, no notes, no. and he's dropping names. Yeah. I mean, you are dialed into this sport. I, I think you're right. I think David Ash had a coming out party last week on that fourth down pass, and I think he'll get it done. I like their offense to put up some big points today. In Lubbock, it's going to be cold, like high 40s, very windy. How does that affect Landry Jones and the Sooners to try to pay back the Red Raiders? I think uh, Landry Jones, it, they've... Texas Tech has been tough for two years, and now it's, it's Oklahoma's payback. I think Landry Jones is playing great football. It's going to be cold, but it's not going to matter. It's payback, Oklahoma. I think Texas Tech right now, number one in the nation in total defense, and they haven't played anybody. I think Landry Jones and the Sooners get it done. An enormous October for LSU and Florida begins. Can the Tigers wake up on the road? We haven't seen the true LSU except for one game this season. They'll need it today. What happens? Like, like I said earlier about Michigan, you can always count on LSU to play to where, they're, to where their opponents are. Ah. So they're going to play up to Florida, and they're going to do it today, and LSU's going to get to win. Oh, no, I got a feeling in this one. Florida upset. Florida upset. Florida upset LSU. Low scoring game. And I think Jeff Driscoll ends up getting it done. I think they'll get a short field. I think uh, Zach Mettenberger is going to turn it over. And I think LSU is going to come up short. I like the Gators. All right. Now, this game. South Carolina never beaten Georgia three years in a row. They're 0-4 as a top-10 team against other top-10 teams. Two years ago, a milestone win over Alabama. Another one tonight. A lot at stake. To me, I think everything is at stake. I think the SEC East Championship is on the line and place, you know, hopefully a bid to the National Championship. They in our way and we trying to beat them to make it to the top. Oh, it's, it's a big game. It's, it's one of the games you circle on your, on your calendar uh, in January. Their fans are awesome. They're loud and crazy the entire game. williams Bryce Stadium is one of the best atmospheres in all of college football. Our fans will be screaming and yelling and going crazy. They'll be there early and they'll be loud and Every time they get a first down, they're gonna let you know it. I mean, our fans love this game, and their fans love this game. Everybody in the nation ready to see this game, so I know it's gonna be a lot of energy there. I can't wait to see it. If the dogs win, it's gonna be real tough for the Gamecocks to catch them because of a favorable schedule. You and Brent in the booth, so give us a key, Kirk. The key, I think, is how the Georgia offensive line performs in front of this environment and this crowd against this defense. If they can hold their own and maintain their balance, they'll win the game. If they're not able to do that, they turn the ball over, then I think South Carolina is able to win. So how the Georgia line plays against South Carolina's defensive line is the key to the game. All right, Darius, we have a bottle of Steve Spurrier's wine here. Are you prepared to toast to a big game talk milestone victory title? How do you see it? Stat for you. The last eight visits to William Bryce. They haven't scored over 20 points since 1994. Georgia's Ooh. not scored over 20 points in William Bryce. South Carolina dominates this game tonight. Wow. Hey, what that some dominance? Right, right. <laughs> I want you to know I really like dogs. Yes, you do. sir. Yep. Earlier this season, I picked a collie and lost. Yes. Smokey. Then I picked a hound dog and lost. Yes. Third time must be a charm. The bulldog. Yes. But but remember, I said South Carolina would not win the SEC in 400 years. Yes, you did. But they're getting close. Give me that hand. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. And the live animals continue here on the Wild like <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> Those big spurs. Oh, big spur. Nice game, Mr. Corso. Okay, Elson. Darius, thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Here's to your health. Thank Cheers, you. folks. Enjoy, enjoy your football Saturday. Here you go, my friend. <laughs>